when they came to my crib, I really thought they was there for somebody else. I was so confused because I didn't even think I was doing anything illegal. Not in big time that the feds finna come in here for this shit. And it was like, um, it was like, yeah, there he go right there. And I was like, damn, who me? Yeah, you ain't think what you was doing with the food stamp shit was illegal. Mm -mm. You crazy, y'all shit, <laughs> motherfucking mom. I'm telling you, like, <laughs> it was so, like, I was so under the radar. I was like, they can't be here for me. They had guns. It was like 16 people with ARs out. I'm thinking like, okay, they gotta be here for the homies because they be doing some shit, so they can't be for me. Good dog, how you feeling, man? I'm doing good, man. I had better days, man. I actually lost a homie today. Damn, sorry to hear that. Like, yeah, man. So what though? Um, heart failure. Like he been he been he was in the hospital. Yeah, yeah. So like he been dealing with the shit for like a whole year, bro. And he was on like life support for like the last two weeks. And today they called me. It was like, yeah, they gonna pull the plug. I was like, damn, bro. Damn. Hey, young nigga, too my age, like 30, 31 or something. Damn, bro. I'm sorry to hear that. That shit crazy. How, like. So you've been pushing this. Um, what's popping, everybody? It's Mr. J Hill. We having these conversations. It gets so good, you be forgetting to do the intro and shit. Um, I think I'm gonna change my podcast name because like the conversation shit just be getting on my nerves. It's too long to put in the YouTube search and shit, all that. J Hill podcast, whatever. Like we have figured some shit out. Been doing this shit long enough. You see the content, you watch it, whatever. My guy Finesse is in the building. Um, we are talking about his friend. His, his, his homeboy just passed away. So uh, we sending sending our condolences to him and his friend's family. Uh, just to let you know where, where we at. I was watching your podcast or whatever, um, the late night special. Yeah. Um, and you was talking about he was in a hospital. Mm, uh, yeah. and you were saying heart failure. Then we were talking about like, you know, health is wealth for real. Mm -hmm. Was it because his, 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 his lack of healthy eating? Was Man, it? really, we don't know where it came from. Um, I know he was really big on drinking. Mm. So I don't know where it came from. They couldn't even say where it came from, but I mean, I'm pretty sure he never had like the healthiest diet. You know what right. I'm saying? So like, I just try to preach that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, to all my homies, like, niggas laugh at me sometimes. Like, man, you eat so fucking healthy and shit. And I ain't the healthiest nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, I eat clean. It's like I don't eat red meat. I don't eat chicken. I don't eat pork. But you shit, I try to. Uh, I don't well, try to put a label on that shit because okay. I might eat. Like, I will say I'm a pescatarian, but I don't eat fish every day because that shit ain't even good for you. You know what I'm right. saying? It's just a cleaner way to eat. But man, I try to eat less as possible really, you know what I'm saying? Cause the food out here is just some bullshit. Mm. So until I move out the country and grow my own shit, that's when I'm really gonna indulge in some food. But I don't drink, I don't smoke. I would smoke weed, but I'm on probation so I can't. So right now I'm just like at the healthiest I could be, but shit, I told myself today like, bro, the older we get now, it's like, you're gonna start losing people. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like we getting older and it's like, this shit reality now, you know what I'm saying? Being 30 plus, um, I don't know the exact age, but like losing somebody at this age, how does it feel? I don't know, bro. I really don't know how to deal with death for real right now. Mm. Like, like I lost my mom while I was in prison, and that was like the closest person to me that ever died. And being in that situation was like, damn, I can't even be there. You know what I'm saying? It's like, even when they told me that he died, I was just like, I couldn't even cry. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just kind of numb to the motherfucking shit. But it's, I don't know, bro. I just how old was you when you lost your mom? I was, it was 2019. I was. 31, yeah, I was 31, maybe, shit, 30 maybe. Just turned 31. And uh, she died two months before I got out of prison. Damn. And then I would always tell her like, you know what I'm saying, like, I only got like two, three years, you ain't gotta come up here and come see me. It was, I was in Mississippi. and But I didn't know she was sick either. And like, she would she would try to like, she'd be so pressed to come see me. I was like, mom, like, I'm only got two years. Like, don't even come, I don't even waste your time. Like, I didn't want nobody to come see me. Mm. And why is that? Was you embarrassed or like was it? I Man, I, I just want to do my time. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't want to be reminded of the outside world. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to be focused on this time. Let me do this shit and get the fuck out. And shit, they told me she was sick maybe like four or five months before I was about to get out. Mm. And that shit was hard as hell because like when she died, I couldn't even like grieve with nobody, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just was in my fucking bunk bed, just laid up, and, you know, niggas was trying to console me and shit, but it was like, I don't even know y'all niggas for real, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't wanna talk to y'all, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, 
that was like the hardest shit I ever dealt with. Damn, I can imagine. How 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 was the relationship between you and your moms before you went in? Man, that was my dog. Like <laughs> she would she would help me commit my crimes. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. not to be bad on her, but like she was she'll ride or die. I tell her what I'm doing, she'll try to talk me out of it. I'm like, listen, man, I already got my mind made up. But that's I think even like you said, like, um, not to promote her wrongs or anything like that, but I, I think it's a positive, you feel me? Because I yeah. like when I was coming up, my mom used to always say, she used to be like, you know, like, you your own man. Yeah. And as long as you as long as you um deal with whatever consequence that comes with your action, I ain't mad at you. You can yeah. do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. So like she used to be my partner in crime too. So I get it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Shit. She taught me a lot of the shit, to be honest, you feel me? So like and, and I think that's definitely a unique uh relationship that we as black men have with our parents. Yeah. Um but another relationship sometimes you see like us not being as close with our parents like i think me and my moms grew apart a yeah. little bit over the times you feel me just because i had to like do shit myself i asked i was asking how um how was y'all relationship because like you know like becoming an older adult you know what i'm saying a grown man sometimes you're not as close with your moms but you feel me like but like mm. i wonder if it's taking the same because it's so many people out there learn their parents is like man you only get one you know Only saying, one. Man. Like I always took care of her. You know what I'm saying? When I was like 16, when the first chance I was able to get a job, I was paying bills. You know what I'm saying like we was, it was five of us, mm. but I was like the only one determined to like try to get her to stop working. You know what I'm right. saying? So like when I finally got a chance for her to quit a job, I was like, yo, you're done. Like you good? Just start a business. So I opened up her like a beauty supply store. Got a, I got a crib after I got locked up. But like my goal was to like get her to just stop working so hard. Cause she, she worked overtime. Like she was a Haitian lady. So all she knew was just work, work, work. And I just hated seeing her come in late at night. You know what I'm saying? Like barely getting paid and trying to take care of five children. So, but that was really my goal. Like why I was doing the shit I was doing anyway. Mm, damn, that's crazy. So you changed your eating habits. Is, is it that, is it that the fool here is bullshit or is it that you just don't want to consume the chicken, the meat? like? Cause I heard you say like, if you move somewhere else to clean the food, you'll eat it. Yeah. You haven't gotten like, I know some, sometimes niggas go vegan or they, they they stop eating meat. You can't eat it no more. It yeah. fucks up your diet. Like, mm-hmm. which one is it for you? I still eat that shit. <laughs> I, I'll indulge in some chicken. Like I might ate a chicken uh, empanada like okay. a week ago. Like, but I know like if I don't eat every day, it ain't gonna fuck with me. You know what I'm okay. saying? So like, I'm doing it just to- In moderation. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Anything you do, if you don't do it in moderation, it's gonna fuck you up. Facts. All right. Let's talk about some shit, man. What's good? Rich and unemployed. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Let's go back for a second. You got you already told us you, you got locked up. You got booked for two years, you said for three years or they gave me um three years, nine months, forty five forty five months. Yeah. You only had to do two years? Nah, I did um I did two years inside of prison. I did a year in the halfway house. So I did a total of three years, but while I was in the halfway house, I was kinda free. But okay. How, this is my first time ever hearing some shit like this. Mm. Food stamp fraud. Mm-hmm. How the fuck, like, what, like, so, so when I, I, I was doing some research yeah. and this is something more common than I thought. Like I've seen shit from five years ago, nine years ago. Yeah. Like this shit ain't nothing new. Like mm. how did you first, and first of all, it was you and your lady or it was a sister because. My sister was on the case with me, but oh. she wasn't really hands on with nothing. She was just, um, she was like my ride or die too. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, I need you to put these stores in your name. Mm. And she was like, how much I'm getting? And I told her, you know what I'm saying? I'll give you whatever. And she did it. So she never really committed the crime. She just was doing whatever I told her to do. So is 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 this something that, first of all, before we even go into it, this is something that's done, right? Like you can't like, yeah, I'm, you I can, can talk, talk about, about it, this yeah. shit. Cause I seen a video on your YouTube page. You started and that was it. Like yeah, what the yeah. fuck? What, what happened to the rest of the content? That was like, just some, a, a preview of like what was coming. Where you know is saying? that, nigga? I ain't even finished recording that. After I got done with that clip, I just stopped. And I just wanted to see how people react to it. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's just another part of my podcast. Okay, well thank you, because we can go into it right now. So, <laughs> yeah. you, 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 food stamp for where did you first see this? What made you even get this idea and you hit it? Like, I'm about to finesse these food stamps. Man, it really started with taxes. Um, <laughs> we was doing tax fraud. Well, I tried to do tax fraud. Okay. And I just never came up like I was supposed to. And uh, like my homie, he was doing, he was like making a killing. What's a killing? And when you say I ain't come up like I'm, you gotta break this shit down Dog. for me. Cause you say I ain't come up like I'm supposed to. I don't to. know how much he was making, but I'll break down how much money you can make off one card. He would pull up on me with a card with like seven bands on it. And like basically the process was you have to have a list of names 
And basically, you go file the taxes on TurboTax.com. And basically, the, the, the amount of names you had basically determined how much money you're going to make. Where you get these names from? This nigga had a plug that worked at a hospital. Oh, and he had unlimited amount of names. And the type of nigga he was, like, he would go big. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't no small time nigga. And like, we first introduced me to it. He was like, yo, bro, I got this drug before he had any money. He was like, yeah, bro, I got this. He showed me some paperwork with like a bunch of names. And I was like, bro, you about to go to jail, nigga. So I was like, nah, I'm straight. So I seen him again. He was like, yo, I told you, bro. I'm about to, he showed me a BMW. He's about to, he's like, I was like, bro, you cap, man. You ain't getting that shit. Man, two weeks later, nigga pulled up in that same BMW. He said he cashed out like 30K. Damn. And so I was like, yo, put me on after that. <laughs> he made me a believer, but this was like my introduction to fraud. He was like, yeah, I'll put you. Well, he kind of bullshitted for a couple weeks. Finally put me on, showed me how to do it, but he only gave me like five names. Mm. So I ran the five names, I probably had like one go through, and I was like, yo bro, I need some more. So this was like 2011, going in 2012. So I was, this was at the end of 2011. So taxes ended at like November, so I was like, yo, I bet 2012 come, I'm about to go crazy, bro. I, I like had my little plan, I had a bunch of names. As Soon as January came, I went, I went in and it failed. Mm -hmm. I put in so many names, bro. I, I was I was looking at like five mil. Sheesh. And it just did not go through, bro. I don't know why, I don't know, like the universe just wasn't fucking with me. And so what I did was, so I put, I put a bunch of names and they went through, but the cards that I had froze up. And so I'm trying to this think like- This is the tax cards. The tax cards, okay. yeah, so I'm trying to figure out how can I, Get these motherfuckers unlocked. So I called. They was like, "Yo, you need, you need to have IDs. You need to send your ID." I was like, "Shit, I don't know nobody. Let me figure this shit out my damn self." So I'm on a, on Photoshop trying to make an ID, and I and I cracked it. I cracked the code. Oh shit! So I sent one in. It didn't it didn't get approved or nothing. So I'm like, "Fuck." So um, this was going in 2000. I worked the whole year of 2012. Nothing came out of it. I probably made like ten, fifteen thousand dollars, but. It wasn't the five mil that I was expecting. Right, but this free bands though. Like, yeah, but you say it ain't work. <laughs> that wasn't nothing, type. bro. Like I, hear you. I was trying to get the whips. I was trying to get everything, bro. I was trying to move out to Mama Crib. I was in my mama basement at the time, and so 2013 came and taxes was kind of dead, and so he started fucking with the food stamps, and okay. he like so he had names. He was just putting them in, and they was going for him, and basically it froze up on him the same way it did with the taxes. They're like, you need ID to do this shit. So he was like, yeah, bro, I need I need an ID, man. I was like, shit, I know how to do IDs, nigga. And he was like, all right, bet, do one for me. I did one for me, put it in, it worked. So he was paying me like $100 uh, uh, ID. And then from that, he was like, yo, he, he paid me like three grand for like 30 IDs. And then he was like, yo, bro, this is costing me too much. Let's just be business partners. So basically I was his ID, man. He would do the rest of the work and then that's when my my scam life started. Damn. Yeah. So he like your food stamps. And this is when you like, you was like, I, I wanna buy my own store? Yeah. Well, nah, it, it, it was a process. Cause like the whole 2013, we was just, we was just grinding. Because it wasn't like the 7,000 you was making like on the taxes, it was like $194. Okay. But How do you make that though? Because I'm, cause food stamps is, is a food, or you're right. getting the money. Cause I know it, it's two different things. You got food stamps and then you got the, the sub, like the money that they give you on a card. Right. So it come on a card, but that's what you need somebody that has a store to basically take the money off for you. And it's basically like a 60 40 split. So y'all had three people in, involved now. You got the ID net, nigga, the, the nigga that's doing it, then the person that's at the store, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And All then, right. So we working, we got a store, man. We, we, we running it up. And by like, well, no, nah, it's really more people than that. Like we had a whole little team. We had like, cause you got to do the interviews. We had a, a, somebody, like two little niggas doing the interviews. We had somebody else doing the applications and I was doing IDs. He just kind of, he just ran everything. You know what I'm saying? But off of, I'm thinking off of 194, you might, y'all gotta be doing like a lot because yeah, 194 yeah. off of like five, six people. Yeah. That ain't really. Yeah, I know. But the thing was, we wasn't paying them off the okay. cars, we paying them like an hourly pay type shit. Okay. And then, so like, let's just say, cause even time, when I was in prison, I was telling this story, like they'd be like, yo, you doing food stamps for all $194, bro, I want no money. I'm like, bro, do 194 times 500. That's a hundred bands mm. a month. You right. know what I'm saying? For like consistently, you ain't got, once you put the 
the the food stamp in, it's like it's it's go. You know what I'm saying? You got to put another application in for another year. So if I got 500 cars and I make 100 bands a month, so I'm I'm guaranteed 600 thousand. So it probably took us it probably took us a year mm -hmm. to get about 500 cards. Mm -hmm. And when 2014 came, I was like, bro, I need my own store. I'm tired of giving a nigga 60, 40. So I had enough money. So like I put together a store, a little, little convenience store. So was this, you said it's like a little convenience store. Is this something that you like just created or it was a big, like it was a storefront type thing? It was a storefront. Yeah, it was a storefront. I had two of them. But it was strictly for food stamps finesse. Straight for, I ain't even have a customer, nigga. I might have one customer a day, but my, my store was making like, the goal was to make, like a thousand fifteen hundred a day. And I had one customer a day. It was just a front, just a so like you had a store, and then they'll give you a portable machine. And like I had a machine at a, at another location where I had somebody sitting there all day swiping. Look, every five ten minutes you swipe. But I mean, at that point you wasn't thinking like I'm gonna get caught because like if I'm only giving one, they got to see some type of foot traction, right? Like no, like Man. that's the first thing that's coming to my mind. Like if if I'm swiping. A hundred times a day, and you only got one customer. Hmm. Well, I wasn't thinking about getting caught. I was nervous, but it was like run this shit up. Why I can? <laughs> it was like okay, nobody's gonna know that I'm making this money, right? You know what I'm saying? Like the the neighbors, they they don't know I'm making money. I just got a store. Even if one two people come in, people just be coming by like, hey man, I know where you can you know build some traction up. I'm like, oh okay, <laughs> whatever. But and then in the system. It's a whole different system, like the food stamp system. Like, yeah, they see how much money I'm making, but they're not coming to the store. So how I got caught was basically like, I was trying to go big on big, you know what I'm saying? Like my goal was to make like 250 a month. And I knew what it, what it required. So I needed like multiple stores and I needed multiple workers. So I hired these young niggas from the neighborhood. Like they was hanging my little brother and shit. And I was like, yo, I need y'all to swipe for me. You know what I'm saying? I got your apartment, got them like, whole crib set up this is this is y'all job you're gonna sit here from nine to five and swipe cards bro and one of these little niggas just took it upon himself to he he just seen he didn't see the the whole picture he just seen one one part of it like he's swiping these cards he's like damn bro you got all these cards that this nigga making a lot of money you know what i'm saying like it won't hurt if i just just take a take a few so he started taking a few, then a few turned into 150. Right. And then so my sister had a job, which was basically, she need, I need her to go take these cards every morning. I need to take like 30 cards to these little niggas every morning. And she started slipping on her job. She would just drop off like 150, just give it to them. They would, Not that, 30 at a time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You, you drop off 150, time, now I can take 10. I can finesse. Right. 30, you, know, you, could, you could count, I right, bet. She'd go three or four days and like she was fucking up my operation and I really couldn't be hands on with it because like I'm really store. trying, I'm, I'm running the store and I'm trying to bring in more cars. I got other workers I got to deal with. So like that would fuck up my operation. So what he did was he took like 150 cards and um, he started selling them shits on the street. He started doing some dumb shit. I want some food stamp shit like uh, 5400 type shit. What's that? Like you know how niggas Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, he's standing outside of Kroger selling cars bro and i'm like and i didn't know it was him at first so like i just went to go do inventory one day and i'm counting the cars i'm like damn i'm missing like 150 cars like fuck my shit at so i called my sister i was like yo you had anybody in here that had a little office dedicated just for my cars so she was like nah so all right so i'm trying to just do the homework on it like who fuck touch my cars i'm asking these little niggas yo y'all touch my cars nah we don't know nothing so at at this point everybody's suspect so I find out it was them. Um, they finally, well, one of them finally admitted to it. And, you know, I thought about killing them, but it just really wasn't worth it. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, like, I'm gonna go do a life sentence because this nigga stole, you know what I'm saying, 150 cars. Like, of course you're gonna pay for it some way, somehow, but I can't risk my life like that. You know what I'm saying? But like, this little nigga, he, like, greed. You know what I'm saying? I, I get it, you know what I'm saying? like. Greed is always gonna take over a nigga, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you like, if you just looking at the money, you don't you don't know the back end, you don't know what all I'm doing, you don't know what it took to get these cards, you know what I'm saying? You just looking at it like, damn, he ain't gonna miss these cards. Fuck right. it, let me just, and he really didn't even come up. And it's also like, um, we talk about it all the time, not even just greed, it's that, that sense of instant gratification, yeah. right? It's like, man, this nigga eating. 
if it's this easy, then I yeah. can do it when it's not that easy. Like right. You don't have, it's a whole operation to this shit. It's a whole step-by-step -step process right. to this shit. Right. And you want to fuck it up trying to skip the steps, right? Right. It's kind of like what we see on Instagram, we see on social media. It's like niggas see somebody with a million followers or whatever. Even what we just talked about, niggas see somebody with a big ass chain and be like, oh, nah, his chain bigger than mine. I need to get yeah. that. Like, nigga, you don't know the, the sweat, the pain, Facts. the process that yeah. got to get to this. You That's why you don't supposed to, to compare yourself to the next man. Facts. <clears throat> but my bad. You can finish you were saying. But I was talking to my nigga <clears throat> earlier today about the same situation. It was like, he was one of the niggas that I put on too. And I was like, bro, like if that nigga never fucked this shit up, bro, like everybody could have been up for real. Mm. You know what I'm saying? This is like back in 2014, 15. Like if you if if like he was at the bottom, like you ain't you gotta really work your way up. Like, yeah, you making an hourly wage, but shit, like you work long enough, like shit, of course I'm gonna put you on. Like, I never be the nigga to just to feed you, you know what I'm saying, just crumbs. I'm gonna make sure that you straight because right. shit, if you just made me a million dollars, like why would I just pay you fifteen dollars an hour? Like, I'm gonna show you how to do this shit or move you up the ladder or pay like something but he fucked up the whole operation bro also i look like i don't know how i don't know if you look at it like this i feel like you know there's a lot of risk that going to this shit you feel me so yeah. i know if if i'm taking care of you is a better chance that you want to make sure i'm good on the back and if, and if anything right. go fuck up but, but is that true though because uh, you could still you can make a nigga a million and he still snitch on you that's a fact so like i'm, I'm <laughs> just trying fact. i'm trying to figure out like I, i'm thinking but i've never been in a situation i don't yeah. really i try to keep my hands clean so I don't know, but I'm thinking like, man, I'm gonna make sure a nigga good. So if it ever go down, he makes sure I'm good. But it's like, mm -hmm. man, nigga, still gonna fuck you over. And I had to give these these talks to like my team, like, yo, listen, if the feds ever come, bro, shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Like, because like it's different when you in that. We could talk like right now, and I'm thinking like you loyal. But like once you get in that interrogation room, like once you once we're, we're split apart, everything on the line. You know what I'm they saying? They say like, everything on the line yeah. the whole time. They probably can't even do anything. Right. But you don't know that. They just telling you they it's on some movie shit. They saying I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. It's yeah. like, oh no, nah, I'm scared. Yeah. So it was it was one of those situations. Like yo, listen, the feds may come one day. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being prepared. Like listen, I had to get my sister to talk. Anybody that was around me, like listen, if anything ever happens, like don't you don't have to talk. Just ask for a lawyer. You know what I'm saying? Like that's they can't say nothing else to you. Even if, if they catch you, they catch you. It's nothing else they can do after that. You telling them any information is not going to save you. So just please be quiet. But so like when my when the feds came and they kicked the door down, um, I had like I had like a couple people at my house and then they, they went to my store, then I had one of the workers there and they, they sat him down and questioned him and I kinda prepared him for the moment. They were like, Who who owns the store? What you doing here? Like what do you he was like, he was really scared of shit, but he didn't tell him nothing. He was like, I, I want a lawyer. And that just canceled the conversation. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with me when they came to my house. Like, when they came to my crib, bro, I really thought they was there for somebody else. I was so confused because I didn't even think I was doing anything illegal. Not in big time that the feds finna come in here for this shit. And it was like, um, it was like, yeah, there he go right there. And I was like, damn, who me? Yeah, you ain't think what you was doing with the food stamp shit was illegal. Mm -mm. You crazy out your <laughs> motherfucking mind. I'm telling you, like, it was so, like, I was so under the radar. I was like, they can't be here for me. They had guns. It was like 16 people with ARs out. I'm thinking, like, okay, they got to be here for the homies because they be doing some shit, so they can't be for me. It was like, yeah, he go right there. He go right there. And I was like, damn, like, so he stepped me. He pulled me outside. He was like, yeah, you know where I'm here? I was like, nah, I don't. He was like, I'm here with the USDA. And I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> what the fuck is that? He was like, he was like, um, we we were over food stamps. I was like, damn. I just kept my composure. Like, I said, all right. So they had me in handcuffs. He was like, he's like, you're not arrested. I was like, oh shit. I was like, what's up then? He was like, well, um, this is just a warrant. We came to we came to search your crib. I was like, all right. So they pulled me upstairs. They're like, all right. So um, he's like, you got a store? I'm like, yeah. They're like, what's the name of it? And I was like, hold up. Fuck this is. I was like, oh no. Nah. I said, I need a lawyer. Canceled it. Cause it was, he asked me questions. It's another nigga writing this shit. He's ready to write all this shit down. And I know they're going to use this shit in court. Right. I was like, oh, nah. And then they took my girlfriend up there. And I was like, I just gave her that signal. Like, don't say nothing. Same thing with her. You know what I'm saying? It just canceled out. So they, they searched my whole crib, took my computers, took my phones, took any type of paperwork. They found everything they were looking for. But in your they, crib? Yeah. So how, how at this point, how old were you? 26. You ain't listen to like, I don't know, you know, Old rap music when they be like you don't never eat a shit while you eat that or some shit like that like never bring the shit home you ain't never listen to none of that shit. Yo, listen. <laughs> or the money was just coming so abundantly. It's like man, 
I didn't have like good thing for me. I didn't have no cars there. Well, okay. I did have cars because like I had a whole office dedicated to it. Like I got like at your house. No, I got an office. Yeah, like maybe a couple miles down the street where I kept cards at. You know what I'm saying? So it was away from me, but like every day I'm I'm getting new cars. So okay. like I just picked up a shipment of cars. Like I got like 20 cars sitting, and I got my laptops. I'm not thinking like I'm thinking just if the cards away from me, boom, I'm good. But like you got the information on the <clears> laptop. Man, I wasn't. I wasn't thinking like ten steps ahead back then. Okay, I was only thinking one step ahead. Twenty six. I can see that, but I feel like if you went that deep, I'm thinking you thinking ten steps ahead. No, I wasn't, bro. I can't. I ain't afraid to admit it. Like I was moving so fast. I was only thinking about the money. So, I'm gonna ask you this, because I'm intrigued as a motherfucker. I ain't gonna lie. When I seen this shit, mm-hmm. I'm like, the fuck. All right, you was trying to do two fifty a month. Mm-hmm. Did you ever get to that? Mm mm. I probably got to um, maybe about like, cause how it works is my store can only take 30, 40,000 at a time. Anything like over 50, 60, like it go by square footage. So I couldn't go over that limit or like you'll be red flagged and they'll come check you out. So I had to stay under that 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 limit. So like I'm building though, I'm building stores. I got like two or three stores. I called all my homies like, yo, you want a store? I can guarantee you like 20, 30,000 a month. And like, I right, bet. So. I'm, I got like five stores on the way. Luckily for me, they came right before I started these stores. So like my case would have been a way bigger case. My case was like right like under a million dollars. It was like nine hundred thousand. When I read this, it said four hundred. Nah, that's what that's what they could prove. So like the case was between two stores, it was eight hundred eighty thousand. But one store burnt down, and they couldn't they couldn't grab the in, information from that. So that one store had like four hundred thousand. So the case was nine hundred, but they only could prove four hundred. They only could prove eight. I mean four eighty something. Four forty. Who knows? But it was definitely Yeah. Not that. Definitely not. That's what we wanna say. Yeah. <laughs> so all in all, honestly, so let me ask you. Three year, two years in jail, right? One year away from I me mean, in a uh facility. If I if I say you're not know doing a this or that thing, What'd you do three years in jail for a million dollars? I sure would. So all in all, was it worth it? Now, wait, I can't say that now because it's so easy to make a million dollars. No, but to go through that again, I would go through that same process again because I learned so much in that process. It's like- Without the knowledge though, just for the money, (laughs) would you do it? Whatever you kept, whatever, whatever the situation was, we don't gotta say nothing, whatever, whatever, Without the knowledge, would you do it for whatever you was able to keep? Nah. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> it wasn't worth it? Nah. The knowledge is what is the most important part. The money. But you ain't going to do it again, I, I mean. Nah. I hope not. Nah. The the money wasn't the most important part because, like, when they came, they was they, was, they were saying they they looking for, like, $400,000. And I was like, damn, I didn't even know I made that much money. I didn't know I had that much money, like, from my two stores. I was just going. And... I didn't I only had like sixty thousand in the bank, but I got a bunch of money on these cars. I like these cars got a thousand, couple thousand on them because I gotta filter them, filter filter them out so slowly. I'm only taking like twenty dollars a day from a car, ten dollars. You know what I'm saying? So like it started accumulating over time. So like they didn't freeze my account. They only took like sixteen thousand from my safe. So like I'm thinking like, damn, bro, like where the hell is this money at? But this is money that I just invested, okay. paying people, opening stores getting new cards. So so you wasn't able to keep a lot, I guess. I mean, no, no, because I mean, I mean, I can't say this on camera, but like, I, it didn't stop me, you know what I'm saying? Like I kept going, cause I already knew I'm about to do some time. Like, let me turn this shit up. So it, it wasn't worth it, no. I mean, I made, it might say 800,000, but like since I started, they only starting from the stores. So before I had the stores, I was making money. And then so after they took my stores, I still was making money. So I ain't gonna lie, man. Niggas kill niggas for much less. You feel me? So I'm just listening. Like it's a nigga out there that's hungry. Like, man, shit, I do that shit to make sure my family good. That's, yeah. what, that's what I hear. It, but, it sound good, but like when that money coming in, you ain't even, you're gonna be blowing that shit as fast as it's coming. I can, I can imagine that. Cause a nigga ain't, ain't never used to having shit. He don't know yeah. how to keep shit. You're gonna blow it. So what about all these other, like, 
I'm talking talking about finesse. You hear money, man. You hear yeah. all like niggas like get a laptop, get these free bands up. Yeah. You feel me? Like we had the pandemic, niggas turned into the pandemic. Like, mm-hmm. what is your thoughts on finesse now? Like, I mean, I see is is rich and unemployed. Finesse is only club. Like, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on the whole finesse? Man, I said get it how you live, <laughs> but um, I. <sighs> I try not to like, you know, my Instagram, like I know what I preach and like, I'm only talking about what I experienced. So like, I know people like are intrigued by it. So like when I post that type of stuff, like people hit me up like, yo, put me on, put me on. It's like, bro, it's not, it's not what you think it is. It's not mm-hmm. just like trapping. Like you go get some drugs and you start flipping that shit next day. Like it's so many lanes when it comes to like finessing and fraud, it's millions of ways to do it. And you really gotta find your own lane in it. Like sometimes you might get like the pandemic where it came around and everybody was on the same wave. But like once that shit died down, it was like people kind of like was lost uh, or trying to find a new wave. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like. <sighs> Let's talk about that though. Cause I, I feel like it sounds similar. I don't know too much about it. I heard people talk about it, but like the unemployment shit. Yeah. Like is, that sounds like a lot of money nigga. Like niggas is talking about is it twenty and forty thousand dollars and mm-hmm. getting different cars and shit like that? Yeah, that sound way more than fucking um, food snaps and shit. Yeah, that that I, I knew niggas that became millionaires overnight, Damn. and they they was broke just as fast. What the fuck is niggas just doing? as fast? I, I knew I knew so many people that I was up. I'm trying to make it make sense. It ain't it's, making it's sense. It's only because people not used to making that money, and it's like if you're not educated enough to know what to do when this money come in. You, when that money come in, you like, oh shit, I can go buy me a car. Well, I can go get me a crib. You People are looking at it as um, income mm. rather than thinking of it as, as a come up. Okay, y'all just came up on some money. All right, now what I do with it? You know what I'm saying? Like, am I going to put it into like investments or am I going to blow that shit on some bullshit? And that's what a lot of niggas did. You know what I'm saying? It was lines wrapped around fucking Louis store, Dior. That's all niggas knew. At the jewelry store, oh, I got bust down this, I got bust down that. But it's like, all right, now niggas got to sell that jewelry. Because shit, you didn't you didn't know what the fuck to do with this bread. The whole time your bust down ain't worth shit. Cause you and probably man, didn't get it from fucking Rolex. You probably man. got it from the jewelry store. Facts. Put a bunch of holes. I, I know too many <laughs> niggas. I know too many niggas that that's broke right now, and they was up. You know what I'm saying? They was, and I was at the halfway house while I was while this shit was going on. You, I know you probably was uh, sick a little bit though. I ain't gonna lie, I was. I'm about to say you had to but, be sick a little bit, like, damn. Like, but I was straight when I got out, so I was like, I ain't, I ain't tripping. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got enough bread saved up where, like, I know I'll outlast these motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm good. So let me ask you, for the nigga, we ain't promoting this, but I'm just curious. Like, hypothetically, there's a nigga out there finessing somewhere, right? Yeah. And you, like you said, niggas are spending their money on dumb shit. I'm assuming it ain't too much you could do because they're going to seize all the money that you made from it anyway. Mm-hmm. What are some things that you could possibly do, hypothetically, if you finesse and I mean, could you get a business or they're going <clears> to <throat> seize that too? Like, what could you do? They can only seize what's in your name. So mm. um, I would definitely say, like, invest in crypto, invest in stocks. Like, learn that game. Um, you can you can grab real estate too, you know what I'm saying? But from a business name, from a trust. There's plenty of ways that you can... <clears throat> Like unconnect yourself okay. from like any illegal activities, and that's what I'm like. So again, I'm fucking child birth with a baby. I have no idea yeah. about the finesse and shit like that. For I hear about it, but I'm just saying, me being a family man, me being a man that want to take care of my family. Like it's kind of like when I was young, I'd be like, man, worst case of work. Worst case scenario, I go to the military. My family gonna be straight, you yeah. right? And then I hear about this finesse and shit. I'm like, man, shit. I would finesse, put it into a business and my family's good. Mm-hmm. I do the sentence to make sure I got a generational wealth. I, that's how I think about it. Yeah. But I don't know if that could that even possibly happen. Like I have no clue. <clears throat> could, could you put your could what I'm asking is, if somebody finessing right, could they put their life at stake to make sure their family good forever? If they did it right? If they did it right, if they put themselves in the right position because everybody that's doing fraud ain't and just making hella bread. They they making bits and pieces. You might come up on like ten bands. And then you might you waiting for the next jug and you living off this ten thousand. So everybody's not making a killing. What's a number to st- like, like you said? You was happy that you didn't get those stories because you probably have been over the the let me probably have, yeah case would have been way bigger. Yeah. What's a number hypothetically again? I'm asking like, niggas like he intrigued this shit. What's a number that you want to stay away from? Like, but like if you don't want to get in no real trouble, like if you um, see yourself getting to it, you want to slow down. Nah, it ain't no number. I say if you're gonna do it, do it. 
It ain't no number. Crazy. <laughs> nah, seriously, if you're gonna do it, do it because if you're gonna get caught, you're gonna get like they can't prove everything. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So like you just gotta make sure like you you crossing your T's, dotting your I's, and they can't they can't connect everything together. Like that's when it comes like this computers and shit. It ain't drugs where they could just watch you and like they know how much money you're making and shit. Like it's it's a whole different game. If if you know a jug, like with me, like okay, I knew how to make $194 with one person, one card. Man, I'm gonna run that shit up until what well, shit they gonna have to catch me. I didn't have no end goal too. Like you gotta have an end goal. Like so, I would say stop at a million dollars. Cause in, from that point, you could really finesse that. You could put that shit in different places. You could finesse 250 thousand, but that ain't enough money. Mm. Not for me, cause. You could blow that shit so fast. Like n- now, it wouldn't. Like if I had two hundred fifty thousand, like I know what to do with it. Right. But back then, two hundred fifty thousand. Fast money, it ain't fast money. It ain't fast enough. Nah, I get it. Cause it fast money is like, oh, that shit out soon as it come in. Yeah, and especially if, if it just falls in your lap, you get a whole two fifty right in your lap. But if you accumulate it over time, like you blowing it as it's coming in, so that two fifty really is like a hundred or eighty. Yeah. Cause you didn't bought jewelry, you didn't bought a whip. You got a nice crib. You're probably putting your mask on. You feel me? You're so eating out every day. Strip clubs. Yeah. Strip clubs will fuck you up. Mm. So. Damn. What's the easiest finesse right now that you think? Um. Um. It's so many. Uh, the easy. There's no easy. What's the most legitimate? This might sound crazy. What's the most legitimate finesse right now? But legit. I'm gonna tell you what I think. Tell me what you think. Credit. Legit though. I say that. I say. And why? Go ahead. I'm gonna say. Say why? Hold on. I'm gonna hear this. I say credit. I'm saying legit though. Mm-hmm. Because you, it's so many ways you could finesse it. Mm-hmm. Like you could like I don't know. You could get a loan for I don't know fifty, right? Mm-hmm. Invest it into your business. Your business could boom. Mm-hmm. Pay the fifty back. It's legit. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm saying, like, when I say finesse, if you get your credit, you could pay somebody to get your credit, right? Mm-hmm. You can get, I don't know, a loan here, a loan there, a loan there, and now you got a hundred, you put a hundred into something, and if you're a good businessman, you could turn that hundred into a million. Mm-hmm. Pay the hundred back, nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I say legitimate. I it, say, it ain't real for, it ain't, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's legitimate, but it's still a finesse. Like I say the most legit finesse that I know right now, bro, is the internet. Mm-hmm. Um, selling products on the internet, bro. Like, so these people I've been interviewing lately, bro, really been like teaching me the game. You know what I'm saying? So like, I always worked on the computer, but it was a diff- it's a different wave. Like these niggas, man, this nigga told me, man, he made, he bought a half a million dollar crib off an ebook. Damn. A ebook, and this nigga's not lying. He showed me like the numbers. He showed me the numbers he's making a month what, by just selling like ebooks, I can see courses. That. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm like, whoa. This shit is it's crazy. And I'm around a, a lot of these same type niggas. And it's like, bro, I got the same, I'm in the same field. And it's all a finesse. Yeah. All this shit is finesse, bro. That sound like, honestly, bro, it sound like, um, what's the niggas that be doing? Sponsorships. Mentorships. Yeah. Man, <laughs> that ain't no finesse. I don't know what the fuck it. I don't want to fuck your money up because you probably mm-hmm. doing some mentorships. But it's niggas out here like, man, Thousand dollar mentorship, twenty thousand dollar mentorship. Let me show you how to get this jug. It's like, yeah. and niggas is paying. They paying, bro. That's 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 not a. And another thing that's talking about the internet is, the um, the uh, Amazon shit. Like you go to like, all this is legitimate. So mm-hmm. you go to like I don't know like a Walmart or something, and you buy like a bulk or something. You just sell it on Amazon. Yeah. One of the different names or some shit mm-hmm. like that. Like that shit easy. I heard too. niggas doing that buying pallets or some shit. I don't, I'm gonna stay away from that. I'm a, I'm gonna build this brand up <laughs> and make a million dollars this year. Rich and unemployed, man. Talk to me about it. what. What does that mean? Like what? What? Make make it make sense for me. Man, I just made it make sense. Um, <laughs> but legitimately <clears throat> though. Yeah. Um. So I came up with the name sitting in prison. Um. And even Finesse's only club. Um. I got another one which is a uh, fraud. Finally rich after unstoppable determination. And these was like, I would just kind of come up with these ideas while sitting in there, but like, cause like my shit was on the news, like the story was on the news and I didn't want anybody thinking like I was just a scammer. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm not a scammer. Like I was just finessing, finessing my way. Like I'm gonna get this bread and then I right, move, to, move on to something else. What the fuck is a scammer versus finessing? <clears throat> well, it's a difference because a scammer finds different, like they, they go into one jug to the next jug to the next jug and they're low level, well, I, how I feel, like they're, they're low level. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
you 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 might have did EDD and like I right, bet you made a little something and then like now you're trying to find another judge. The nothing, ne- the next one. nothing wrong with being a scammer. It just I don't want to be classified because I don't want to be a scam. I'm not. That's just not me, bro. I'm really an intelligent motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? But like, if somebody came with an opportunity, like, hey, bro, you can make a million dollars. Like, shit, I'm gonna do the math in my head. I'm gonna wait, outweigh the motherfucking the the negative that come with it. I bet. Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna take the risk. So like, that's in a finesse is just. You just finesse in situations. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we finesse Walmart every day. You feel me? Like any, <laughs> anything. You Kroger, know what I'm saying? we finesse them motherfuckers every day. It's a finesse. So like, I, like I ain't gonna say like I, I'll never be a drug dealer. Like, if the right opportunity comes, shit, I will flip that shit. If right. somebody came with like a hundred pounds and I can get it for a low number and I can go sell it to him for a higher number, boom, I make that deal and I don't gotta keep selling drugs. Yeah. But I just finesse the situation. So okay, I get it. I, I, I wanted to be. I didn't want to be in that class, you know what I'm saying? So like I came up with like the Finesse's Only Club, just me just thinking and thinking and thinking. And then like, I was just thinking of ways, like I was studying marketing, I was studying branding. Okay, like how can I make some out of this shit? All right, like, I didn't even know like that was gonna be my, my handle. I just knew that like, I'm gonna make a club of Finesse's. All right, what can I do with it? Then one day I just wrote down Rich and Unemployed. Didn't know what that was gonna be either. Didn't know what fraud was gonna be either. So, <clears throat> When the pandemic came and everybody was talking about the unemployment shit, I was like, it was a perfect time to drop this shit. And I came out with the shirt and niggas was fucking with it. And so like, I just started, I just started fucking with that. that that's the brand now. All right, boom, rich and unemployed. All right, what can I make out of it? And I did like, I did like one podcast. First I was always talking to my phone and people was fucking with it. Like, damn bro, you dropping gems. And I was calling that Fraud TV. Mm-hmm. And then, I don't know, I just, one day I was like, you know, I'm just call this shit Rich and Unemployed. And boom, so but like Rich and Unemployed, like, I'm gonna use that as like a university. So like people that inspire to be Rich and Unemployed, like listen, I'm gonna teach you how to make money. I'm gonna teach you how to become rich, how to become rich and unemployed. So it's a podcast, but it's, I'm, I'm, I'm interviewing Rich and Unemployed people basically. So like, just by watching my podcast, you get in this game. So all right, boom, let me take that, let me take these, these views, let me take these people that's that's intrigued by it, and I, I know that you're you're willing to learn some shit. Boom, listen, I got I got this for you. You know what I'm saying? Come up, like make a product out of this shit. Damn. So, rich and when I hear it, right, like I hear entrepreneur for mm-hmm. for sure. But how, how do we create generational wealth by being rich and unemployed? Like, how, like how do I give give something to my family and have them take it on? You know what I'm saying? Because when I think of unemployed, I think of not having a job, I right? Guess. But I also think I'm an entrepreneur too. So like, but if we looking at rich and unemployed, how do I pass that on to my my? my you gotta children? make that money work for you. You gotta you gotta have that money money sitting where you ain't even gotta touch that shit. It's working overnight. Like I got my money in crypto. Mm-hmm. If I die today, like I gave my sister all the information. You know what I'm saying? Like, here you go. You know what I'm saying? I just blessed you basically with you know what I'm saying six figures worth of in, um, crypto. Okay. And then boom, like if you let that shit sit for five years, you know what I'm saying? Like I bought my her. She got a daughter. I bought her a fucking Bitcoin. Mm. All right, so like by the time she 18, who knows how much this shit gonna be worth? You know what I'm saying? Like, and if you don't touch this shit, you can pass this shit on, like even real estate. Like you gotta put some money into real estate and have that shit sitting. That's that's how you build it. That's how, I didn't know this game. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like I had to learn this shit. Like we can't just be blowing this bread. You gotta have this motherfucker invested. What are some of the, um, like, well you said Bitcoin, you said crypto, um, real estate. What you think is the most lucrative one? I would say, I would say crypto. Crypto is because it's a new wave. Everybody's hyped about it. Um, you put your money in the right coin, bro. You can literally be rich in a year. You know what I'm saying? You could put up a thousand dollars. You could put up twenty thousand. You know what I'm saying? You could turn like I put up. I put up um, like a hundred, like a hundred thousand in Ethereum, and at its peak. You know, my money damn near almost tripled. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that let me. Did you pull it right then and there? I didn't or? pull, no. Nah, because it, I wasn't looking, I'm looking at a long term investment. Like, yeah, I could have pulled the money out, but nah, fuck it. I mean, for the long run, I already know Ethereum is like the next big thing to Bitcoin. So, like, yeah, I'm, I didn't I didn't make the money right now. I didn't pull out, but two, three years down the line, bro, that Ethereum is going to be up there. Mm. 30000 And my $100,000 investment is going to be a few M's. Damn. I feel like you got to have, like, Trust into that shit. I think somebody was talking about the uh, NFTs and shit, and they was like, "Man, this shit ain't just." This is- NFTs is different, like because it's it's a really hype right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
you can go buy you a fucking electronic painting or some shit like and you thinking this shit is valuable it's only valuable because we we made it valuable mm. you know what i'm saying this rolex on my wrist is only valuable because people want this watch you know what i'm saying like we put the value on shit mm -hmm. so like nfts is this big hype and once this shit die down, like who knows? You know what I'm saying? It's like, and then you in different clubs. Like, okay, little baby just bought one for two hundred fifty thousand. Okay, now it's like, all right, well, not I know I gotta to per to be in this club. I know I gotta spend that that much money. And people buying it just to be amongst these people. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'm not investing on NFTs. No, I've been thinking about it. I don't know. I don't know. I gotta it's keep learning. It's not a bad. Because my homie, he put up like thirty bands, and his shit at like a hundred thousand right now. Now that's something to think about, man. Yeah, I appreciate all the game. Yo, have a question. If you had to like sell your game, how much would you sell it for? Like to put a nigga on if you trying to get on. What type of game you talking? I mean, everything. Not nah, one specific cuz like you said everything could be like scamming, right? Let's say if you want to finesse this one this one type of jug, yeah. right? Like what you just told me, like how much would you sell the game for? Like the real game, everything step by step. I don't know. Would you sell it? Yeah, I would. Could you get in trouble for that? Yeah, it's like a um, conspiracy. Okay, all right. You could, um, by giving a nigga a game, like, cause I knew a nigga, like he came out with like a fraud Bible and was selling that shit. Okay. And it's like some shit that you could buy on the dark web. It's basically like a, a pamphlet of different frauds, shit you can do, you know what I'm saying? And they locked his ass up for it. Damn. Yeah. Sheesh, even if you don't do nothing, just giving you this game, I get booked for it. Yeah, you can, man, when it comes to like federal crimes, bro, a conspiracy, like just by you having knowledge of it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I done seen so many people. You fucking me up. I don't even want to put this episode out. <laughs> <laughs> like, just by you having knowledge of, like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like, let's just say I was I was doing like the food stamp shit and like you was making money. You you probably made just a couple of dollars or like you, you move one thing and, and transport it to, like, that's conspiracy. You can You can get locked up for that. And that's like worse. That's the that's the uh, what's that shit called? The the is that the racketeering shit or not? Nah, that's something nah, I'm about to say. No. Like I heard niggas get a lot of time for conspiracy. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, that's racketeering. Conspiracy is just it, it it takes a lot for you to get out of that because oh. all they got to prove is that you knew you was a part of it. Yeah, or you was a part of it. That okay. was it. Damn. See, I don't know nothing about none of that shit. Lucky good. me. That's good. I'm about to say because I stay on straight. I learned. Right? You know what I'm saying by having to go through this shit. You know what I'm saying like, but now I'm like I'm way smarter. You know what I'm saying? If I didn't go through this shit that I went through, bro, like, I would've been moving just like I was back then. I'm smart too, cause I learned from your mistakes. I don't have to, I, don't, I ain't fucking with it. Mm -hmm. I'm good, I don't want a year in jail. So yeah. I learned from niggas like you, so I will never try this shit ever again. Like, yeah. I mean, never, never. Yeah. I would never try it. <laughs> I teach my homies though, like, yo, listen, don't ever like sleep with nothing in your house. Like, I, I, I try to preach that. Like, I try to tell niggas how to move. Like, if I know you, like, what you're doing, like, bro, go get you a stash spot. You know what I'm saying? Like, why are you having all this bread in your career? So you don't promote against it? Like, you wouldn't you wouldn't tell people not to do it at all? You would just tell them to do it smart? Or is it like, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it type thing? I can't Shit, change I ain't think daddy. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm not here for that. But okay. I, would, I would tell you what, I, what I've been through. You know what I'm saying? If it could help. Like, I ain't going to tell you, man, don't do that. Because, I mean, I wouldn't even came up with this whole brand if I didn't go through that shit. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. So, like, no, go ahead. If you're going to do it, do it. Like, I'm, that's like me telling you not to sell drugs. And they just make you money. Like I, I'll tell you what to what and not to do. Like bro, like this is how you' supposed to move. Damn. Yeah, I appreciate you, my guy. Uh, let niggas know how to follow you and all that. Support um, your YouTube and all that shit. Yeah, my YouTube, my TikTok, my Instagram, Finesse's Only Club. Um, if you want to tap in with me, just follow me. Man, I got a mentorship coming out. I got all type of shit coming out. I knew that mentorship was coming. Yeah, it's coming out. Cause I mean, <laughs> I get hit up so much about it, man. How much so, you charging? I don't know yet. I don't know if I want to do a low ticket. I really just want to help niggas. You talking about fifty dollars on one of the videos? You like you could do fifty? Yeah, no, I don't know, bro. It might be too low. I got so many products that's about to come out. You got a lot of game though. Yeah, so it's like, I, I wish I could just help everybody for free, but it's like I'll be a do I'll be doing a disservice to myself not charging. Yeah. So I gotta charge. Well, wish you nothing but the luck. Best of luck, man. Niggas sure. wanna follow you. Fuck with my guy, Rich, Mr. J Hill. Ah oh, man, that's, that's all we got, man. It's a wrap. Appreciate it.